Hello and welcome to my new video. Have you ever wondered what your Android applications are actually sending over the network? Today we are going to answer this question by doing traffic interception. Basically we will sit between the application and the internet and check every request and response go by. This video is a part of my Android Reverse Engineering Basics playlist, so even if you had never done traffic interception before, don't worry, we will go step by step. Before I show you any tools or methods, let's build a simple model of how Android application communicates. Most Android applications are clients in the client-server model. Your phone runs the client and somewhere on the internet there is a server that it talks to. The app sends HTTP or HTTPS requests to the server. The server responds with data, JSON, images, HTML, whatever. Traffic interception means we place our own tool between the application and the server. All the traffic flows through us and we can see and modify it. The way we do it is with a proxy. A proxy server is just a program or machine that the app sends its traffic to first. The proxy then forwards the traffic to the real server. So without a proxy application communicates directly with the server. And this proxy application communicates only with proxy and proxy itself communicates with the server. Because everything flows through the proxy, it can log requests and responses, filter them and modify them. When the proxy is sitting in the middle like this and dealing with the encrypted traffic, you often hear the term man in the middle or MITM proxy. And now comes an important detail, encryption. All the HTTP is a clear text. If the application sends password over HTTP, anyone on the pass could read it. With the proxy, it's easy to see everything. But most applications today use HTTPS. The S stands for secure, and it means the data is encrypted between the device and the server. When HTTPS is used, the application and the server perform a TLS handshake that involves certificates. If we try to sniff HTTPS traffic directly, all we see is encrypted data. We know requests are happening, but not what's inside. So how do tools for traffic interception show us decrypted HTTPS? The trick is turning our proxy into a trusted mini-certificate authority. Here is high-level idea. Traffic interception tool generates its own root certificate. We then install the certificate on the device and Android trusts it. When the application connects to something like api.example.com, traffic interception tool pretends to be the server and issues a fake certificate for api.example.com signed by the root we installed. The application accepts it because the certificate chain looks valid. Traffic interception tool then makes a real HTTPS connection to api.example.com in the background. And now the tool decrypts the application's traffic and re-encrypts it to the server. So this is the basic idea behind any HTTPS interception tool. In this video, we will consider HTTP toolkit since it provides a user-friendly interface around the whole process. Some applications, however, may add a layer called certificate pinning. Pinning means that the application doesn't only check whether the certificate is trusted by the system. It also checks whether the certificate or its public key matches exactly what the developer expects. If it doesn't match, the application refuses to talk. This breaks interception until you bypass the pinning. If you wonder how to do it, I have another video on my channel. You can proceed to it by clicking the link on your screen. And now let's see how to do traffic interception and practice with HTTP Toolkit. I'll show you how to set up the tool, connect the device or emulator and inspect your application's traffic in real time. To install HTTP Toolkit, we simply open a web browser and search for HTTP Toolkit. We go to the official website and right on the homepage we are offered the download button. I click download for Windows and the download begins automatically. This gives us an installer file. Once the download is complete, we open the installer and follow the usual installation steps, just like for any other program. After that, HTTP Toolkit is fully installed and ready to use. Now that we have installed HTTP Toolkit on our PC, there are two scenarios for connecting Android device, depending on whether the device is rooted and which Android version it is running. The first scenario applies to devices with root access or devices running Android version 10 or lower. Let's see this in practice. In this example, I am using Android emulator that has root access. I open HTTP Toolkit on my desktop, go to the Intercept tab and choose Android device via ADB. HTTP Toolkit detects the device and starts the setup automatically. The same automatic setup works if we connect the device using the QR code method instead of ADB. On the Android device, the HTTP Toolkit app is installed automatically and it immediately requests permissions to start local VPN. And with app allow. Because this device has root access, HTTP Toolkit can complete the remaining steps automatically. In the majority of cases, you will see what we see currently on the screen. The application connects and shows user trust enabled and system trust enabled. Sometimes on certain devices, after the VPN permission dialog, you can see another dialog asking for interception certificate to be installed. If that appears, just click OK and confirm your device pin code if prompted. Once this permission is approved, the connection is complete. Back on the desktop version of HTTP Toolkit, the Android device appears as connected and the HTTP traffic will immediately start showing up. Let's verify that. I click Test Interception and we can see the requests appearing in the log. Everything is working. 
And that's what you need for the device which is rooted or device running Android version 10 or lower. Everything is actually handled automatically by HTTP toolkit. Now let's consider the second scenario. Using non-rooted device or Android version 11 or higher. We start the same way. I click Android device via ADB and HTTP toolkit and the companion application installs on the device and it is asking for a VPN permission. We allow that but now we see something different. A dialog appears saying that manual setup is required. This happens because Android 11 and above doesn't allow an automatic installation of HTTP interception certificate on a non-rooted device. The dialog shows the exact steps we need to follow so let's go through them. We tap open security settings. In the settings screen scroll down and tap more security and privacy. Scroll again and select encryption and credentials. Then tap install a certificate, choose CA certificate and tap install anyway when the warning appears. We now see the certificate file that HTTP Toolkit created in downloads folder. We select it and Android shows a message confirming that CA certificate has been installed. Now we go back to the HTTP Toolkit application. It updates the status and shows user trust enabled and system trust disabled. This is completely normal for a non-rooted device with Android 11 or higher because the system trust cannot be enabled without the root. But that is not a problem. For the majority of applications, user trust is enough and the interception will work correctly. We tap test interception and we can see the intercepted requests appearing on the desktop. So that's the second scenario of setting up HTTP toolkit. Manual certificate installation is required on non-rooted Android device with Android 11 and higher version. Now let's move on to some real world scenarios where we can see how traffic interception works in the practice. I've prepared several test applications with different examples to demonstrate various types of requests and how we can inspect and manipulate them. Let's start with the first application. Here we have a base URL httpbin.org. This is a special domain commonly used for testing and demos, so we will be using it in most of our examples. This application includes multiple functions that perform different kinds of requests. Simple GET and POST requests, a request to domain that is down, a long running request and a function to cancel it. After these examples we will also explore more advanced cases where we can change the house behavior by mocking the server response. So let's launch our application and see how interception works in practice. Let's click the first button to send the GET request. As you can see the request appears in the left panel of HTTP Toolkit. We can click on it to view all the request details. Let's also open the app's code so we can compare everything clearly. You can see that the domain and the endpoint exactly match what's written in the code. We can also see the custom header we added, Android X-Ray and test get request. The status shows 200 which means that the request succeeded and the method is get. The most interesting part for us is the response. We can fully inspect the response body which is automatically generated by httpbin.org based on our request. This way we can clearly see how any server responds to any request. Next, let's send a POST request. I click the button and again the request appears in the interception log. This time, since it is a POST request, we can also see the request body. If we open the app's code, we can confirm that the body fully matches the one we sent. And as before, we can also see the server's response. These two examples, GET and POST, are the most common request types you will typically encounter in everyday apps traffic. Now let's move to the next example. I click send failing request and we see it appear in the log with a cross circle icon, meaning that the request failed, which makes sense since the domain doesn't exist. When we click on it, HTTP toolkit shows that the hostname couldn't be resolved. Later in the video I will show you how we can mock the response for such a failing request. Next, let's send a long request and cancel it after few seconds. To better understand what's happening, we will also open logcat in Android Studio. In the code you can see that this long request lasts for 10 seconds and when it's cancelled the app writes logs. So I'll now put HTTP Toolkit, the emulator and the logcat on the screen. Now I click send long request and we can see loading request appears in HTTP Toolkit. Now let's cancel it. In the logcat we can see that the request was cancelled. However, in HTTP Toolkit the request still shows as loading. Let's wait a bit. And here it is, the request eventually finishes and receives the normal response. We can view the full request and the response even though the client cancelled it mid-execution. This demonstrates that HTTP Toolkit still captures full request information regardless of client-side cancellation. Now I want to show you how mocking the response may affect the app's behavior. We will start with a more simple application and then move to a more advanced one that is often seen in the real world especially malicious applications. So here we have another application. Initially it shows a main screen with a single button. Based on the server response, the application loads one of two different screens. The first screen appears when the response body contains sample slideshow, which is always present in the default response from httpbin.org.json. So let's launch the application and tap check server response. 
The request appears in HTTP toolkit and the application loads the first screen with the original response in the text view. Now let's mock the response to change what the app shows. First, we copy the request URL and go to the modify tab in HTTP toolkit. Here we can see the default rules, which we should better not modify, and we also can see the option to add a new rule. We click add rule, and in the match column we choose any request, and then for a URL, because we have the exact URL we want to mock. There are actually many useful options here, for example regex based URL matching, but in this case we will paste the exact URL and save it. On the right side we select post the response and manually add it, because that's what we want to do. Then we click save the changes. We don't need to restart the application, we simply trigger the request again. It appears in the log and opens automatically with a pencil icon indicating it's being intercepted for manual mocking. So let's modify the response. We can change the status, headers or body. For this example we will edit the body. I'll remove the value of the title field, leaving it empty. Then I click resume. The application now opens the other screen with a mocked response in the text view. This happens because the original keyword the app checks for is no longer present. This perfectly demonstrates how application logic can depend on a server response. Now let's move to a more advanced example which is widely used in many applications, especially malicious ones. In this next application, the main screen sends the initial request. Based on the response, the application either opens a decoy screen or a web view activity. The web view loads a hardcoded Wikipedia URL. In this example, I'm intentionally using a URL that is down to show how to handle unreachable endpoints. I launch the application and tap send request. The request fails and after 10 seconds, the timeout defined in the application, the app shows the decoy screen since it didn't receive any response. Let's fix that by mocking the request. We repeat the same steps, copy the URL, go to the modify tab and create a new rule. Again we match any request for URL and paste our URL, but this time on the right side we choose pause the request to manually edit, not the response. This prevents the request from ever reaching the server, useful because the server is down. Before we trigger the request again, we need to understand what the response must contain for different behaviors. If we check the code, the application looks for the field open web view and checks its boolean value. So let's prepare a JSON response. I'll open a text editor VS Code and create a simple JSON object containing that field. So I just open curly brackets and paste the field with the value, and copy that. Now let's send the request again. This time the request doesn't fail. Instead, HTTP Toolkit pauses it before sending. We click response directly to fully custom craft the reply. We paste our JSON in response body field and click resume. The application now loads the web view screen with Wikipedia. Let's try again, but this time with open web view value set to false. I go back to the menu, send the request again, paste the JSON and update the field. And after resuming the request, the application loads its decoy screen. This shows how applications, especially malicious ones, often depend heavily on the server side response. By mocking those responses, we can reveal hidden behavior of applications. Now I want to show you one more example, which is a slight extension of previous scenario and is also common in real world applications. In this application, the server provides two values, a boolean flag that indicates whether the web view should be opened and the URL that should be loaded inside the web view. The application will open the web view only if the boolean value is true and the URL is not empty. Otherwise, it will display a decoy screen, just like before the server URL is intentionally unreachable, which makes it perfect for mocking with HTTP toolkit. I've prepared a response in advance, a JSON object with the open web view boolean field and URL string field. First, we will use the exact combination that the app expects in order to open the web view, a true boolean value and a valid URL. We trigger the request again, HTTP toolkit pauses it and we paste our JSON before clicking resume. The application receives the mocked response, checks both fields, sees that the flag is true and the URL is present, and therefore launches the web view with the Wikipedia page. Next, we return to the main menu and repeat the request. This time we mock the same response but change the boolean to false. After resuming the request, we can see that even though the URL is valid, the flag is false and the app ignores the URL and opens the decoy screen instead. Now let's look at the final scenario. We repeat the request once more, but this time we remove the URL entirely. We paste the JSON response, set boolean back to true, but leave the URL empty. According to the app logic, both conditions must be met. The flag must be true and the URL must be not empty. Since the URL is missing, the application again shows the decoy screen. This clearly shows how real-world applications may rely on a server controlled flags and values to decide which functionality to enable and which content to show. With the HTTP toolkit, we can fully control these responses to see how the application behaves in different scenarios. So that's it for today's walkthrough. Now we have seen what traffic interception is, how it works in real-world applications, and how to use HTTP toolkit to inspect, analyze, and even modify several responses to influence the app's behavior. 
I hope these examples helped you to understand how powerful and useful traffic interception may be during development, testing and reverse engineering. If you like this video, please put your like and subscribe and turn on notifications not to miss further content. Thanks for watching and see you in next video.